Hello, I'm Grace Vandenberg. This conversation is actually inspired by you and me, and the world we live in, and the way people, men, and younger women perceive women of an older age. So I thought back to when I was turning twenty and then thirty, those milestone birthdays. And there seems to be a lot of anxiety about entering a new decade, and somehow we have these preconceived notions that everything's going downhill. There's nothing to look forward to. The best days are behind us. I'm grateful to have been taking control of who I am and finding comfort in that acceptance early on, because I see too many women in their forties and fifties and beyond who are so very deflated by age. I know that feeling only too well. I had the exact same anxiety, fear, upset associated to turning thirty. I literally felt like a part of my heart had broken. Drama queen, right? But I did, and I can be very honest about it and admit it. Today I'm thirty-eight and don't shy away from announcing my age. But when I was twenty, I recall saying to my husband, "When I turn." Thirty or twenty-six. I was going to start lying about my age. When I turned twenty-six, it didn't feel right, so I never did. Plus, it helps to give me an emotional and mood boost when people mistake me for much younger than I am. Funny story. This really is funny. <laughs> Only recently, a knock came to my door one Saturday afternoon around lunchtime. I answered the door. Two young people stood in front of me. A young man, twenty-five; a young woman, twenty-one. The girl said, "I don't think you're old enough to help us. Is your mummy home?" At first, I was stunned, shook my head, and giggled. I said, "I'm the woman of the house." They both looked at each other with questioning eyes. So the guy asked me how old I was. I answered honestly, thirty-eight. They both agreed they thought I was younger than the guy. And about the same age, it's a twenty-one-year-old. Little experiences like that, funny as they are, can be great for making us feel better about ourselves, especially if we're in the process of querying who we are each time we look in the mirror. And so, if I had lied about my age, I wouldn't have had that little boost. Point B. I'm here to argue with you. That is simply not true. I never want to feel panicked again about age or another birthday, so I did some soul searching and came up with a list of things that I no longer worry about over thirty. I want to serve as maybe the inspiration for you to not worry so much about what it is that you're giving credence and credit to unnecessarily. And if you've been around here for a little while and you know me at all, you'll know that I'm intolerant to the unnecessary. What is it that seems to be taken away from your focus, from making you feel good, because you're so caught up in what it is that you think you're really losing? Let me present you with the truth and facts, not notions, ideologies, unproven ideologies, and opinion. You are possibly gaining from age. There is something liberating about not caring about other people's opinions, and not caring about pleasing others either. That's not to say, with a bad connotation, it's not to say that we're not trying to be mindful and thoughtful to those around us who share our orbit. But the, the unimportant people, placing our self-worth and value system on what others think about us. Let me give you an example. Being an author, it can initially be gut wrenching to receive bad reviews, especially online for all to see. We might feel right off the bat the need to explain the story, plot, or meaning behind what it was a reader didn't like, make them see it our way, make them like it. I've equally noticed that some customers have pattern and enjoy ripping people and their work apart. For many reasons, perhaps they want to do what that person does, but don't possess the work ethic to try, 
or have, don't have the skill set, or simply on occasion that person truly didn't like your work and there's no malice intended. Some feel the need to try and humiliate, embarrass and shame you online for all to see for all sorts of reasons. In a case like this, it is paramount for the writer to not take this to heart. There's bad people everywhere and people with problems who may be transferring their insecurities onto you. There's all sorts of reasons which is why we need to be mindful to get to the truth. Otherwise, we're just going to take on a whole bunch of other people's negativity as our own. And that will never serve us well. But at anything, it will hold us back. Because the time and energy that we instill in that one thought, those opinions, those words that really are not are really not valid, is energy taken away from your own productivity and motivation. But we're all human. How can we not take this to heart? I have learned a value system I apply to virtually all aspects of my life. That includes negative reviews in my professional life. If you ever take the time to scroll through book reviews, say on Amazon for argument's sake, you can tell when people are trying to impress others with their knowledge by ridiculing published authors, trying to use fancy words as though they were an author themselves, imprinting themselves in how they would have done this or that or whatever, when in actuality the book isn't about them and the author has never met the person. A ring of pompousness can be heard in their words. These are in turn rendered unimportant. All the reviews are designed to just hurt, be belittling. These are in turn rendered unimportant. It is the professional critics that matter. And once I learned that, I was able to develop tactics, a sort of film around myself to stop listening or reading and taking on board invalid points of view. Yes, everyone is entitled to their opinion in this PC world, but that's not to say that the whole world will stop or should stop and listen. I learned a while ago not to let the not so good ruffle my feathers. Also, not to base my value system on the good. I don't need praise in order to feel good about myself. I don't need praise to make me feel that I'm worthy of existing in this world alongside others. I don't need negativity to make me feel bad about myself. I am my own compass and I set the course. And when you start doing that and stop giving such validity to other people's criticisms, comments in your life, then suddenly you are no longer dictated and guided by others. But accept your own choices, pleasing yourself first and foremost. It is such a simple pared down way to operate, one that serves me very well which is why I've simplified my entire life. And it has been an incredible lesson to learn. I want this for you. Even what, if what I apply might not work for you, the how doesn't matter. What matters is the achieving. The fulfilling of who you are in whatever way that fulfills you. I cannot begin to express how liberating it is to not worry about other, what others think about me. Opinions are valueless to me. Facts is my currency, tried and tested. The next thing I don't worry about over 30 is my relationship with food and body image. It's completely changed and I'm so grateful. And that was another lesson, a very long, drawn-out course. As a child and then again into my teenage years and young adulthood, I had an eating disorder. Why? Well, the very harsh truth is, because I had a very abusive and cruel father and brother who'd call me fat when I actually wasn't, who'd mock me, make me conscientious of myself and what I consumed and what I didn't consume. My own father often called me a fat C-word. Yes, the C word, from a very, very young age. This was so damaging to me that the only way I could eliminate the name-calling and the disdain 
was by starving myself to lose weight. It felt better to starve myself and lose weight than to be overweight and eat anything. Instead of finding a happy balance, it was one extreme to the other. I lost so much weight that being forced into a hospital and having a drip inserted into my arm was threatened by the doctors. Ironically, this is often more common against mothers than fathers, but in my case, it was the father. He acted out the Munchausen syndrome by proxy. By me being sick and needing medical attention for anorexia, actually more starvation, he derived pleasure of acquiring attention and sympathy from strangers. As a direct effect, I still to this day struggle with keeping in control of not feeling too guilty of what I eat. My relationship with food and my body image, yes, has definitely changed, but it wouldn't take much for me to steer in the wrong direction if someone got under my skin with insults. But by keeping tight control of this, it doesn't happen. But it takes effort, constant daily effort. So I only ever eat for to live. I rarely eat anything for enjoyment or treats. The way that it has instilled a fear deep inside me, but I don't ever let it take control of me. Food is not a weapon, but too often is used as a weapon to harm women, to make us feel lesser than. Now I see it as a source of nourishment, a source of energy, responsible for keeping me healthy and strong. I've invested so much time in understanding food and how it works in the body, and knowing what works better than others. I accept change in my body. I have to. We all do. It's going to happen. Nothing we can do about it. So why on earth should I fight it and make myself miserable with it during the course? It's an opportunity for me to do things. An opportunity for me to explore and try different exercises, try different movements. For me, this makes life exciting and exhilarating. Who knows? I've lost count how many times I've discovered new things I wouldn't have otherwise, and not only enjoyed them as much as the things I was doing prior, but preferred them. At thirty plus, I don't seek praise for. Anything from anyone, I have a firm grasp of what I'm good at, where I need to improve, and we all do. Nobody is good at everything. We all have strengths and weaknesses. We just have to be honest with ourselves. The types of people I will never ever get along with and refuse point blank to have around my orbit are those who claim they don't have weaknesses, and it blows my mind how many people have this attitude. This is not simply an innate self-confidence. This, to me, in my opinion, is arrogance. Arrogance is not a trait beneficial to anyone. You can't and shouldn't base your value system and value and self-worth on other people's opinions. Bottom line. I remember my twenties and thirties, still until recently, which I am still working on, by the way. In an argument, I would stand my ground. I would argue it up, down, left, right. Because I had to be right, because of course my way was the only way. Trust me, I've learned that that's not always the truth. That I do make mistakes. I have made mistakes, and I will continue to make mistakes. But I love the humbling experience and the strength of character to be able to offer up an apology for when I've made that mistake. That I'm not less than because somehow I'm imperfect. I have witnessed within society so many people who will lie and lie and lie some more until the final breath about something they've made a mistake regarding. But to save face, to not appear weaker, and to be the person to back down, they will never take accountability or ever humble themselves to apologize. And I've learned there's a true beauty in taking accountability, and saying I was wrong, and offering an apology, particularly when an apology is graciously accepted. I grew up around that mindset, and let me tell you, it's not good.
It's not good for you being around that black cloud. It's not good for the people portraying it either. But some people truly refuse to evolve and learn. This was never how I wanted to be. I could never be that person. I'm a human being, and therefore I am imperfect. And I think it's important that we acknowledge that in ourselves. Not to be afraid to say I'm sorry. All in all, I have found that every deck that I move forward in, I have loved so much more than the previous one. I'm honestly, truly, sincerely excited about getting older now. The changes that I feel in myself, the more daring confidence, the inexcusable reason to never ask, "Am I good enough? What am I good at?" Having that firm grasp of reality of who I am. Where I'm going, what I want, and how I'm going to go about it—it's so thrilling. Because I know I will know so much more in my forties than I do right now, and I know I will be an even better person in my forties than I am right now. Because I will keep putting in the work and the effort, and I will keep showing up every day to make myself that better person. And what I love about getting older is the wisdom. I love where I am in the moment I live in. I appreciate it, the opportunity to have lived long enough to learn these life lessons. That all by itself places so much value in life itself. I am grateful for the knowledge, the life experience that I have acquired over the years to make me a better person in every area of my life. And I'm grateful to have the characteristic within me, to know when I need to fix things about who I am and how I treat people. To be blind to ourselves, I truly think is a poison. It is the investment within that you can make you full, and therefore have more to give to others and feel satisfied. The thing that I don't do now over thirty. Is fear. There is no point wasting time or energy fearful of things that haven't happened yet, because they might not. And if they do, you're going to need all that already exerted energy to figure out a resolve. I've learned so many times that by being fear fearful of the unknown, fearing what might happen, what could happen, places me inside my own prison, shackled. This isn't smart. For every day we spend inside it, we aren't living. Live a little bit better, and a little bit more by taking more risks. That's where the beauty lies. That's where the excitement is. That's where opportunity exists. So please, might I ask you to share some of your tactics, thoughts, and the things that you have learned? From so we might all be able to help another person still in their journey, as we all are. Please, I humbly ask you to allow this platform, our platform, to be a society where we can live, lift one another up every day, and learn from each other, giving blessings to all who share this within us. Let me wish you a happy self-discovery. Until next time, I'm Grace Vandenberg.